reaction when you heard the news that you'll be playing the lead uh, in Don Quixote? Yes, can you hear me okay? Yep, I'm not sure how this is. Okay, great. <laughs> um, well, I was super first honored when um, Lisa sent me a message. Um, you know, usually we chat about all sorts of things during the pandemic and uh, when she had mentioned the opportunity to come back to Manila, that it would be, you know, the full-length Don Quixote, I was just thrilled. I mean, my first reaction was, this is so exciting, and this is something that I, you know, my first full-length Don Q was with Valley Manila, and now my second one is going to be too. <laughs> so that's very exciting to come back um, to a stage and to an audience and to a company that I feel has kind of set my career in motion. You know, Valley Manila is where I started, and it always feels um, like coming home. You know, it feels like a lot of love and a lot of joy, and um, that's kind of what Don Quixote is, you know, as its own ballet. So for me, the, the feeling is probably how Kitri would feel. <laughs> Just excited, and, and I kind of can't wait to, to experience it. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. We can't wait to, to watch you here in Manila. Uh, my second question is for actually for uh, Gerardo Francisco. So just watching the short video really brings a lot of joy since I watched it on the, during the world premiere. So just would like to know if there are any changes this time on the restage or you're going to keep the original flow of, of the, the production. I think the, the what you're using this time the uh, this one the internet uh, um, and the uh, graphic design maybe for the effects and I, I think the rest of the is that that's the only change we are using this one for the effects. Okay, thank you. And this is just not a version. Um, it's a touring version. I think it's also going to be with a smaller company. So it's a smaller cast. Right, Gerardo? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so again, it's a smaller cast. It's a shorter version. And also we will be maximizing the LED screen. And so that's something that we can look forward to. And we also can't wait for it to tour um, around Manila and the Philippines. So thank you very much, Sir Gerardo. Uh, Our, any other questions? Over here. Yes, sir. Uh, for me, it's Lisa Mops. Lisa. Um, how did you decide on the 25th season's line of shows and how different will this performance season be compared to the previous seasons now that the shows will be performed in upgraded Adil Theater? Um, making, uh, creating a season is very difficult, especially because I really did not know how many dancers I was going to have um, during the season. I didn't know um, whether or not it would be possible to put up a season until last year when we opened, we opened the Alil Theater in, uh, was that in... August last year? Yeah, August last year. Uh, um, and, you know, we basically, I decided to postpone the announcement of a full season of Ballet Manila until all the other ballet companies in Manila have done theirs. So that's why I decided to do something completely radical, which is open a season in February instead of close the season in February. Always we would close the season in February, open the season in August. Um, so we decided to do open the season with Martin Lawrence's um, uh, Romeo and Juliet. And that was inspired by his short version during the concert to Loy Ang Sayawan, which was actually Catherine's last performance in the Philippines before she left. Uh, I mean, well, she came back. Yeah, you came back after Jackson and after 
being in Washington Ballet for a while. Um, and so he had a 20 minute Romeo and Juliet that had a premiere in Star Theater. Uh, we still had Star Theater at that time. Uh, and so I wanted to expand that and make it a full length ballet. And so I talked to Martin and I said, why, why don't we make this our season opener in February next year, which is, you know, just right for Valentine's Day and for Arts Month and a very apt season opener. For uh, Don Quixote, the reason I put it is because, as previously said, uh, my, my ballet teacher in Russia said, a company gets strong, company dancers get strong with putting up clap ballet. So uh, I really wanted there to be a classical ballet, full length classical ballet performance. And honestly, the easiest classical ballet performance to put on if you don't have that many dancers is Don Quixote. Um, you can't really do a Giselle if you don't have 32 girls. <laughs> and I don't have 32 girls in the, in the company at this time. Uh, or or La Bayadere or Sweden for that. Um, and then for Ivo Madarna, the reason I put Ivo Madarna in August to close our season is because uh, we did plan to open our 25th season with a national tour of Ivo Madarna. This was before the pandemic happened. And when the pandemic happened, everything closed down. Of course, that all those plans uh, to oh, to bring Gerardo Francisco's Ivo Madarna all over the country and in different theaters in Metro Manila that fizzled out. And you know, uh, uh, Ivo Madarna happens to be the first Filipino full-length ballet that was toured internationally. Um, it had uh, two performances in Israel uh, as part of a, an arts festival in Israel. Uh, so, you know, I, I really thought that th it would be very, very appropriate to end the season with Gerardo Francisco's in Bongadarna. Um, it wasn't easy. We had to make many concessions. First and foremost, all those rehearsals for two performances, that's painful for an artistic director to do. Uh, because I know that my dancers would love to be able to perform more. But again, we're all adjusting to this new norm. We're all feeling our way uh, through the, the new um, audiences that we're going to bring to the new Alim Theater. And I think this is a very uh, uh, auspicious beginning. It may be a simple beginning, but it's a beginning nonetheless. And uh, from here, I think we're just, we're just starting and we're going to soar. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Lisa Makuha Elizalde. Okay. Next question over here, please. Hi, good morning. Um, congratulations to all of you. I'm Jessica Pagiway. I'm from the Manila Bulletin. I handle the youth section. So speaking of the youth section, I, I witnessed that there's a conscious effort to uh, insert things that, that is new, um, the use of the LC that, uh, this few and this the theater, and there's this conscious effort as well outside the theater to entice the young market to accepting the classics. From we see it with Maria uh, Clara and Ibarra, and now do we also have a conscious effort to bring ballet closer to the younger Filipino market? All the things that you do now is it a conscious effort to entice them to accept it or, um, yeah, to accept it more or to get their interest? The question is, um, there's a conscious effort. Who wants to answer that first? <laughs> Lisa, would you like to answer that? <laughs> uh, you know, um, I've always said, ever since I first came back from Russia in oh, 1986, <laughs> um, uh, because I saw how developed the audiences are in Russia as far as accepting and coming to the ballet and accepting ballet dancers, yeah. You know, as like 
their rock stars in the, you know, the opera and ballet stars are their rock stars in Russia, for example. And, and I think that all uh, happened because of audience development. And uh, you only are able to survive as a performing artist if audiences continue to buy a ticket and go to the theater to your performances. So, you know, with YouTube and with Instagram and all of these different social media and, you know, uh, internet platforms, uh, you get to watch dancers um, and ballet dancers um, in the flat screen, but there's nothing like watching it live in the theater performance. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring back the audience to the theaters for them to experience the excitement of a ballet performance. And we're always targeting the youth. Why? Let me put it this way. Um, when I uh, watch, or when I'm in Kinaliu Theater watching a performance of my choreography or of my ballet company's performance or of my recitals performances, people come up to me and say, mothers come up to me and say, Mom, we watched you when, you know, uh, when I was a little girl. I don't know if I'm really happy about that, but, you know, <laughs> they, we watched you when I was a little girl, and uh, we, we came here to Star City when you were doing Cirque de Ballet performances, and, and I w remember watching you as a little girl. So now that I have my little girl and my little boy, I'm bringing them to watch the show here because I enjoyed it so much when I was, when I was young. And uh, I think that's the way to do it. One generation at a time, you develop that audience for ballet or for the performing arts, and that's how performing arts will continue to survive and thrive. And that's how the creativity of, of uh, cr you know, creating these new performances will continue, and we will continue to make, cr create our own classics that will last for many, many, many years to come. Thank you. Well said, well said, thank you. Apollo, I have a question yes. for our principal dancers, Joshua and Pearl. So Joshua and Ciso and Pearl Danis. Sure, um, I have a question because coming back to the theater, how does it feel that we are back on stage performing again? Was it a long break? Uh, in between performances, because I remember us, kami na mahinihinga tayo, dancing, pitik pitik lang yon. Um, I remember going back into the theater and feeling like, wow, I need, I'm more tired now, I need to warm up better. How does it feel going back? And um, ano yung mga bago yung experiences or adjustments? Hello. So that's the feeling. So, excited kami, nakinakabahan, na ready na kami to perform with an audience. Sobrang, ano din po eh, inihintay po talaga namin na mangyari. Ito na po namin po yung pandemic. Tapos, ito na po, nangyayari na po ulit na ito na po. Yes. And then, ang lagi nalang sinasabi na anong arts ang huling babangon sa pandemic. Ang unfair nga eh, kasi Imagine na uh, bakit yung ibang word na nakabalik na tapos tayo parang 
Alam mo lang ba tayo sa sayo eh, di ba? So, um, time will come and then ito na nga. So, give your best na nandito na tayo. Yes, this is it. Uh, th this is it also because it's Joshua and Cesos and per Pearl Damis's very first full-length ballet yes, ever. So this is it. <laughs> in terms of how you treat K3 um, from your 2018 performance to your 2023 performance? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> no, for sure. For sure. Um, you know, when you when you debut a role we'll, we'll like K3, and I was so young at the time, I think I was probably 19, maybe just turned 20. So it was a really big, you know, Man Lisa had a lot of faith in me that I didn't even have at the time. So, um, you know, coming back to the full length key tree, I have had a lot more time dancing excerpts of key tree over the last few years. I've done a lot of of the Act 3 part of the different um, galas and, and different performances. But to return to the full length, I think the biggest difference that I hope uh, will be evident is a more authentic and natural approach to the character that I've been trying to develop artistically, you know, as I've gotten more experienced and more comfortable on stage and more trusting of my technique. So it's less of a focus on the steps and more of a focus on how I am naturally interacting with the people on stage and naturally um, being in the environment that Kitri would be in. So it's it's less going out into the audience and and being like, oh, I'm you know a fiery Spanish girl, and more just being that character and allowing the audience to experience that story with me. So I, I think that would be what I hope is is evident um, and an evident difference in my interpretation now is probably just experience and trust and more authenticity and more fun. <laughs> What's dancing if it's not fun? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. That was good. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Good questions. Anybody else? Yes, over here. Hi, good morning. I'm Sabrina, writer from Quentin. Uh, my question is for the lead dancers. Uh, of course, uh, we all know that costume plays a big part in the show. So I'm curious because I was watching the guys a while ago, they were dancing in jeans. So how how is it like with that? Is it that uncomfortable or it depends on the jeans. If it's stretchable. Um and another, um how do you feel that your this is I understand this is your first full length show as key dancers. So how do you feel about that? <laughs> um, so super excited po ako. Super excited po sa first full Siyempre po, ang dami kong pinaghahandaan. dami kong sobrang extra work. Tapos talagang kailangan mo kasing sabihin. Parang pila ko kailangan mo maging storyteller. Kailangan mo talagang ano mo, ano pa malawak yun. Nung i-research ka, mag um, manonood ka ng mga uh, Romeo and Juliet movies, tapos um, mga bali po na ano. Nung i-research ka, tapos mag-observe kung paano nila For me naman, I'm so grateful na 
Pag-deload ako for RNJ and syempre it's a big preparation uh, physically and mentally. Kailangan prepared ka kasi uh, hindi siya basta-basta. And also, kailangan uh, you need to be inspired. Kung saan may inspire yung choreographer. So, yung mga details na yun, kailangan mong i-absorb para may nalabas mo siya, mapakita niya siya, mapakita mo siya sa audience. So, uh, that's it. You need to be inspired to inspire others. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's important to note that uh, for Joshua and Carol, they, they were just promoted to principal dancers um, December of uh, last year. So this is their first production as newly minted principal dancers of Ballet Manila. Congratulations to the both of you. Deli <laughs> I'm sure you're going to do a great job. We, yes. we're, all, uh, we're all rooting for you. Any other questions? Great questions, by the way. I actually have um, an additional question to Sir Martin. How was the experience directing our newly minted principal dancers? I, I couldn't have done it without them. That's the honest um, answer. When we worked together in 2019, we just touched at the surface. And I think this time we were able to dig a lot, lot further. And that's what's exciting when you're working with young, raw talent and a story that can break your heart, melt your heart, you know, where do you go with it? You go with two beautiful dancers and see where they take it. And I think that's, for me, been the exciting thing. Thank you very much, sir. And any additional questions for our panel? I believe we're good, yes. Aha, uh -huh, all right. Well, in that case, can we please give a big round of applause once again for RNG choreographer Martin Lawrence. Principal dancer and uh, Ballet Manila's resident choreographer, Gerardo Francisco. Of course, our principal, newly minted principal dancers, Joshua and Ciso and Burl Dames. We have, uh, uh, coming back home to the Philippines, she's one of us, Catherine Bartman. Thank you for joining us, Catherine, on this uh, lovely day. And of course, the one and only, Lisa Makua Elizalde. Thank you, thank you. I hope uh, your questions have been answered. You should be. And, uh,